A jig is truly one of the best lures to go out and catch a bass. You can flip it into cover, you can swim it, you can drag it on the bottom, you can fish it shallow, and you can fish it deep. And today I want to give you five tips that will greatly help you catch more fish on jigs. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Now, whether you're looking for jigs, crankbaits, swim baits, rods, reels, no matter what, more than likely Sportsman's Outfitters has some of the best prices prices on your favorite tackle and they always have some sort of deal going on. So if you guys want to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, click those links down below in the description and shop at Sportsman's Outfitters today. The first tip when it comes to fishing a jig that I think is extremely important and sometimes very overlooked is pay attention to the way that bass bite a jig. So many times we get caught up going out there and going fishing and when we get a bite we catch that fish we put it in the boat but sometimes we're not always Always paying attention to actually how they bite our lures or in this case how they bite a jig and recognizing how a bass actually bites a jig will help you to catch more fish on it and what I mean by that is there's several different bites you will get on a jig the one that we all love is when you feel a big thunk and all of a sudden your line is just moving off. Typically when the bass are biting it that way, you have the right jig dialed in. You have the right presentation dialed in. If the bass hit a jig really, really hard, and this goes for more baits than just a jig, if they hit it really hard, sometimes that means that there are other bass really close by because those bass get in a competition with each other and therefore if you put your lure in front of them, there's gonna be fish that are flying over to try and get it before the the other ones can. So when they hit it really, really hard, not only does that mean that you have probably the right color and the right size, but that also could mean that there are a lot of bass close by. So slowing down and really picking that area apart can help you to catch more bass. Now there have been several occasions when I'm out fishing a jig and I'm actually reeling that bait back to the boat, whether to make another cast or another pitch. And I have a bass come up there and absolutely eat it as I'm reeling it in. Now this is really, really important to pay attention to because one, that fish might be telling you something and it might be telling you that those bass want more of a horizontal presentation than a vertical presentation years ago actually when i was fishing in a high school tournament way back in the day i was flipping and pitching a jig up to shallow cover as i was bringing that bait out of the cover a bass actually came up and ate that bait and i caught that fish but then it kind of clued me in that those fish might want a horizontal presentation and i actually ended up picking up a square bill and really catching a lot of fish and this was really really interesting to me because in the practice for this particular tournament I had thrown a square bill a lot and hadn't caught a lot of fish on it and it was just like it was just like a light switch those fish kind of switched from a vertical presentation to wanting a horizontal presentation and all of a sudden they were all over a square bill but what clued me in was how that bass bit the jig now you might not always have to switch to a different lure sometimes you can just start swimming that jig and start catching fish now another way that they will potentially bite a jig at time is they will actually kind of peck peck at that jig and sometimes you swing and you miss but that actually brings me to my next tip which is pay close attention to jig presence what i mean by jig presence is really kind of the size of that jig there are some days when you go out on the water and the bass actually want a really big presence they want a big profile jig they want a really big jig i have seen this a lot when it comes to fishing muddy water a lot of times when you're fishing in muddy water one of the best things that you can do to really help the bass hone in on your bait is kind of upsize your bait or use a lure that has a lot of vibration but if you upsize your bait and you start using a bigger jig it will actually displace more water and that will help that bass to find that jig in muddy water. Now there are other times where bass don't want a big presence, they want a smaller presence and a more finesse style jig. A lot of times if I am fishing a jig and I get fish that are peck pecking at it like I just talked about it, that is when I'm going to switch to a finesse jig. And I have seen that be the difference between a bass peck pecking at it and catching some and actually getting a lot more bites by switching over to a smaller size jig, a smaller presence. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can change the presence of your jig. Obviously you can switch from a bigger jig to a smaller jig, but something that you can simply do is actually trim up the skirt on a jig. Sometimes making a more compact jig, even though it's 
it's the same jig can also help you to get those fish that are kind of pe pecking at it to actually commit to it and eat it. Along with that, you can use a smaller trailer. Instead of using a bigger trailer, maybe like a big crawl or a big chunk trailer, use a smaller chunk or a smaller crawl trailer. And that can also help you to get those bass that are pegging at it to commit to it better. But really the important thing is, is to pay attention to the presence of that jig. Cause there are days where they want that big jig and there are days when they want more of a finesse jig. Now the third tip that is really, really going to help you catch a lot more bass with a jig is stay organized. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, no duh, Tyler, that's kind of a gimme. And here's the big thing. It is extremely important to stay organized with your jigs because a lot of times when we take a jig out of a package and use it, we know the size of that jig. We know whether it's a quarter ounce, a three eighths ounce or a half ounce. And sometimes you get on a bite and the fish are biting it really good. And all of a sudden you lose that jig because you get it caught in a tree branch or whatever. And then you go to get another jig and you forgot what size was that jig? And I cannot tell you, and I cannot stress to you how important jig size is when it comes to actually fishing a jig. There are days where bass want a heavy jig, a five eighths, a three quarter ounce jig that falls really, really quick. And there are days where bass really prefer a slower fall rate. Fall rate is probably the most important thing when it comes to fishing a jig. And if you are not organized, you may forget what size jigs are in your box and you might pick up a three eighths ounce instead of the half ounce jig that the bass were really liking. And then worse yet, you might know how important jig size is. So then you look at your box and you're trying to figure out, well, what size jigs are these? And you take them into the kitchen at your house. And then you use your wife's little meat scale to weigh all your jigs. And then she sees you weighing your lures on her meat scale and that's just not a good thing to have happen. But the big thing is stay organized because the weight of your jig is really, really important. Now, there are a few companies, for instance, like this Freedom Tackle jig that I'm holding right now, they actually put the size of the jig on the bottom of the jig, which I think is really, really smart. It's on both the structure jig that I'm holding here, as well as the swim jig that is in my hand. So if I ever forget, it actually shows right there on the bottom. Now, the fourth tip that can really help you to catch more fish on a jig is paying attention to the patterns within the patterns. There are days where you go out there and you start catching fish on a jig. For instance, you might be going down the bank and you're flipping lay downs. Now, something that I have found to be really important with a jig and a lot of lures in general is there are always little patterns inside patterns. For instance, you might be flipping a lay down and the bigger bass might actually be at the tip of that lay down where maybe some of the smaller bass are kind of where that lay down meets the water. So really paying attention to little patterns within patterns can really help you to catch more fish on a jig. I see this a ton with docks as well. Some days I've seen it where every bass that you catch is on the last pole of a dock that's in the deepest water. And then I've seen other days where it's literally the next day and the bass are all on the walkways and not even on the main part of the dock. So there's always a pattern within a pattern, not just for jigs, but for with lures in general and try to pay attention and find those patterns in a pattern. Now, the fifth tip that will help you to catch a lot more bass with a jig is simply keeping a jig in your hand all the time. That's something that is really great about a jig is that the bass will eat it year round. And I actually made a video that I'm gonna link right here where I go through all the different jig patterns that I see over the course of a year. So if you guys like this video, you like this one, don't forget to comment below any of your questions, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.